there. <laughs> Welcome to Savannah Virtual Comedy Bar. My name is Long John. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking right now. Ooh, he's got a sexy accent. Where is he from? <laughs> I'm from Zimbabwe. But if immigration asks, I'm an Africana from Kruger's Drop. And my name is Pete. Pete Lamine. <laughs> and no, I didn't steal this job. <laughs> I applied for it like anybody else would do, really. It was a great experience. I just approached the owner and I was like, give me your fucking job! Give it to me! Look at me. I'm the bartender now. <laughs> so get used to me <laughs> and help me welcome your first headliner, Nonto A. Ah. <laughs> Hi, thank you, thank you, thank you. So guys, like, I want us to have this conversation, right? Because I know how you men think, hey, only you, one chick, say, hey, it's got the mind of its own. Well, let me tell you something. Even ours, eh, it's got the mind of its own. There's this state of mind that only happens to us once a month. Every girl will agree to this. No matter how good your relationship is. Like, I, I, I try to be a good wife, to be virtuous, Proverbs 31 wife. But there's just this one time, once a month, where my mind just goes and it does its own thing. I call it the holistic state. Ho. Holistical states, right? When the holistical states comes, you want like a lot of men, but all at once. Men don't know this. I'm about to teach you. See, this one time I was at the papa when it started. I did not know what hit me. And you know, like they really like massage your head nicely. Then you can start thinking things. Like I saw the doors of Jericho open and then they close at the same time. And it's like ah, ah, ah. I ended up leaning little bits right on the guy and he was like no ma'am you're supposed to look that way like, ah oh, you know and look, it's so sexy that queen is pushing you like there's also music that goes in my head like do -do 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 -do. everything just becomes romantic guys it's the holistic state it's not me and then the second time it happened, I think I was in a taxi. You know cuz I think when the taxi moves it just <laughs> It shakes everything. <laughs> and then the music came. And then there was a guy sitting just next to me. So I started, you know, stretching like I want to open the window just to get close. That, that's how, like, hectic this thing is. It just makes you do crazy things that you wouldn't do because uh, I'm a, a woman of God. But it all happens here in my head. And then the next time it happened, I was at a dentist because I was trying to fix my, my windscreen here. And you know, like, also this one is really tricky because, like, the doctor, he needs to be here in your face. And then he kept on saying, open wide. <laughs> and, and then I opened. And then the music kicks in. I'm looking at my dogs, I'm like, wow, I never realized he's got such nice big eyes. And then the other time it happened, I was at a traffic light, right? Then there was a voice again in my head, it said, hey, look to your right. I was like, no, I'm going home, going home to my husband. No, just look a little bit. Then I looked and then the music came. The guy had beautiful big eyes. And then my devil on the side and Jesus on the other side. The, the devil was hitting the brake, brake one time and then Jesus was accelerating. Like, no, we have to go home. So the car was moving like this. And the music is still going in my head. I'm like, this is like an action movie of some sort. You know, but when I got home, I wanted to share this with my husband and tell him, hey, like, you know, I almost got eaten by mistake. Because I want us to have these conversations because even with my husband, it happens. You know, like, this is why I've got four kids because every winter, guys, I fall pregnant, especially if it's, like, connected to the holistic estates. I remember this one time, right? The condom was here on the pedestal, the bed is here. And then my husband said, oh, take the condom because it's on your side. And then I was like, no, you take it. 
And he was like, no, you take it. <laughs> no one was going to take it because it was too cold. They had to put out the hand. And then the music came. So we decided that we're going to do pull out. So for those of you who don't know, please don't try this. It takes years of practice. Even I haven't perfected it yet. That is why I've got four kids. <laughs> So what happens there, um, the train moves, right? And just before it hits the, the brakes, you know, as it's about to get to the stop, then that is where you pull out. That was the plan. So we did it, right? Nice, nice, it's very hot. There's fire coming out there. And then, I, I heard, you know, I heard the brakes going, and I, I think I might have made a mistake there. Instead of pushing, because I was the one to push, I, I pulled, and that's how I got my last born. So please don't try the pull out at home. All in all, we like men, women like men. This is my holistic estate. Embrace yours now. Hi, boy. You know, it's hard being a Zimbabwean living in South Africa. People have these weird assumptions, like just because I'm Zimbabwean, I don't have a passport. I mean, come on, guys, I do have a passport. <laughs> just doesn't belong to me. <laughs> anyway, help me welcome the man I'm sharing a passport with, <laughs> Tyson. Behind this door lies unanswered questions, pain, hurt, and most importantly, a first-hand account of the very subject of South African horror stories. Let's dive in. Thank you so much for sitting down with us today. Please, state your name to the camera. Jacob Zephaniah Lulu. Um, also known as Pinky Pinky. Right. Uh, so, Jacob? What do you want to clarify? I don't live in a toilet. I mean, can you imagine? For years these kids sang this. An entire generation. You don't know what that's like. But how did this happen? And why this name? We used to renovate bathrooms. I'm a tiles way to there. Look, it was one mistake with paint that shouldn't have been there. Okay? All of a sudden, Pinky Pinky is now a thing. They even had a song. My name is Pinky Pinky. I live in the... Stop it! Jacob, thank you for availing yourself to us and, and being so open. Um, today you have let the world in and I assure you that they will welcome you back with open arms. Just not in front of mirrors. Too soon. So, Zachariah? No, 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 no. Please, please. Bluey, bluey. Right. <laughs> okay. Bluey, bluey. Um, you're the lesser known um, supernatural being. In fact, no one knows who you are. So how would the rules of demonic terror apply with you? I might not know, because I'm in the garage, yabo. So so you in the garage and you reach for a star, but you grab the flat instead, then me, <laughs> Yeah. Right. Um, do you feel you are in your brother's shadow? Well, if this was Destiny's child, yes. you would be. Hey, 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 exe, exe. Utin, man, je? No, 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 no. Switch off the camera, man. Uza mutin, eh? Yes, in fact, this interview is over, man. Yes, yes. yes. I've given you the opportunity to tell your side of the story because no one cares about. Hey, full time, man, man! Bluey Bluey continues to deny that he lives in his brother's shadow. 
His disavowal of the truth will be the factors that hinder him from making a mark. And as it stands, that looks highly unlikely. Next week, we interview a true veteran of the demonic arts. Is it a costume or is it a man? We interview Impundulu, not to be confused with Impendulo. That's not the answer you'll be expecting. Join us again next week for Who Am I? You know, I, I really envy South African ads. I'm telling you, like, Zimbabwean ads be like, does someone owe you money and not paying back? Dial star 123 hush to order your lightning today. <laughs> and, and speaking about people that owe me money, please welcome your second headliner to me, Moroke. <laughs> star 123 hush. Getting me out of the house. Just, oh my god. No, seriously, thank you. I've had enough of my kids. I love them so much. It's enough. Oh, and I'm also grateful for the rains. It's raining. Yes. The dams are full. Thank you. Hey, we have been praying for rain. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I'm convinced it's white prayers that worked finally, not, not the black ones. Black people prayers, we off ramp. <laughs> black people prayers off ramp, my friend. We are all driving to Cape Town and you wonder, when did we get to Mozambique? That is a black prayer. White people are focused when they pray. That's why their prayers are answered. They focus, they arrive at God's office with an agenda. Hmm? Black people, we arrive with a whole entourage and some crazy prayer protocol before we even enter the office. Like white people get there and then they say what they need to say. And they say thank you in advance to God. Hey, they get to Uncle God and they laugh. Ready? You know? Our prayers, we must tell God who we are like he doesn't know. We must tell him who we came with. We must tell him how we got there, who let us in, and all the intel we have on him so that he doesn't say no because we aren't even asking for miracles on the same level as what he's done before because we've got his files. You know what I mean? It's like a Zondo commission where you're speaking to God. You're like, hey, the God of Moses, God of Israel, you who brought the Israelites through the Dead Sea, you who drove the chariot of fire with Elijah. And God is like, yeah, that's my vibe. And then... <laughs> You know, like by the time we are done, all we hear is God hangs up. God hangs up because he doesn't care. He was there. Not white people, my friend. They get straight to the point. Because as we have those aunties, né? those aunties who arrive, even when somebody has passed, they are those aunties who just want to speak to God in parables. Like they go, no, God, I'm gonna go Jesus on your ass. It makes no sense. That's why God only answers white people prayers. Well, it could also be because they are Karens. Can you imagine a Karen <laughs> nagging God? Like, dear father, father God. And then God is like, Jesus, fuck. Okay, sharp, fucking hell. Karen, if I answer this one, because I mean, how many fucking male Hail Marys do you have to go through? Like, don't you finish them already? Like, you finished all your fucking rosaries, and now you've made a belt out of rosaries, you fucking Karen. And then if I answer your prayers, will you just leave me alone? Because Karen is there. Karen is there. Karen is with God, even about sourdough bread. That's how much Karen is bothering God, that level of prayer, okay? But I find it entertaining, I won't lie. I love, I love people with faith, I love people who pray, you know? Especially the long-winded aunties, because they, they are the narrators, man. Like, the one thing that I do miss ever since lockdown is, is attending people's wakes. I wish they could bring that back, the night vigil, because nobody understands how entertaining that shit is. Because even though we all speak the same language, the auntie needs an interpreter. It doesn't matter. We we'll all speak, but he needs an interpreter, and he's going to want to tell you everything about this guy. And uh, like, you know when Trump, when Trump had COVID, they should have called that auntie to come and pray, because that's the auntie who'll arrive and go, oh, oh, the trumpet, the trumpet. Because you know he's Trump, né? but he's, he can't just be Trump. You need the Trump, you need the drama. The trumpet, because he talks too much, he becomes the trumpet. The trumpet. Okay. And then you should look at the interpreter. Trumpet came in talking too much. Trumpet! Asa 
Trumpet was not afraid of COVID, was not afraid of the, we're not allowed to, we're not allowed to call it that. China virus! Afraid of the China virus. China virus! Afraid of the China virus, go on. Trumpeta! Ya fitla COVID! Ya rehontabi! Trumpet! The COVID arrived to Trumpet and said, you're not afraid of me, Trumpet. Trumpet is now sick. Trumpet is now sick. Trumpet is now sick. Trumpet is Trump's orange is now becoming black because he's sick. Trumpet! Trumpet! Trumpet is now sick. <laughs> the COVID is sitting on Trump's neck saying, What are you saying? <laughs> yes. What are you saying? <laughs> Love those aunties, because you walk away confused. You're like, Was I at a wake or a political rail? Don't give a fuck. Anyway, the dams are full, but this is why they don't answer our prayers. The dams are full, the drought is over, and I tell you, if anything, can make racism worse, it's a drought, guys. Imagine, just close your eyes and picture a thirsty racist who hasn't showered and smells nasty. Yeah, now that's a Bond villain. That's, that's like fucking skin. Cause he, then, plus they white people, when they start to go that color, where they're not quite white, they're not quite colored, they're not quite yellow. It's not orange either. It's struggle color. There's a color they have, it's called struggle. You'll see them when they're begging, I call it struggle. You can't place it. It's just unnatural, like, I don't care what you say, but if there's one race that was not born to suffer, <laughs> I still give them 10 runs at the corner, because I'm just like, I'm just glad that Cape Town can finally stop being fucking dramatic. Because the whole country was in a drought, but Cape Town, you would have thought Cape Town was the only place that had a drought. They were the most dramatic. They weren't the hardest hit. They were just the most fucking dramatic, okay? Like, a pregnant woman would walk around and be like, oh, the water broke. Hey, save water. There'd be a guy under here with a fucking bucket catching the water, because you can't just break water and waste water. She'd be like, ah, oh, sorry, madam, I'm going to flush with this. You know what I mean? Thank you. I feel like telling you a secret. You see, my real name is it actually Long John. My real name is Learn More. And Learn More is a, is a normal name in Zimbabwe. We actually laugh at your names when you come to Zimbabwe. We're like, wait, you, your name is Fakazani? <laughs> Fakazani? <laughs> How do you say it in short? Fuck! <laughs> why Zimbabweans give their kids names like this. It's because Zimbabweans, we believe our, our children tend to become what we name them. You see, I used to have a friend named Kisnot. Kisnot right now is 31 years old and he has never kissed anyone in his life. Yeah, I also knew a kid, you know, he didn't even achieve anything in his life. He's staying with his parents, doesn't have a job. Why? Because his name was Take It Easy. <laughs> Mommy, when I grow up, I want to be a pilot. Oh, <laughs> take it easy, my son. <laughs> in, in school, there was this other kid also named Billionaire. Billionaire actually became a billionaire. And I know right now you're asking yourself, where, why haven't I heard of Billionaire? Well, the problem was the billion was in Zim dollar, so it didn't really make a difference, for real. <laughs> Sometimes, as Zimbabweans, we leave it to God. Let God decide what this kid is going to be in life. That's when you have names like Emmanuel, Godwin, God knows. Even God is like, I, I, I don't know, guys. I have no idea. <laughs> you see, sometimes it's not even about the kid. Sometimes it's a message from the elders to your parents. For example, my grandmother named me Learn More because my mother was 18 years old when she got pregnant with me. So my grandmother wanted want to send a message to my mother to learn more in life. So she named me Learn More. Then my, mom, my mother got pregnant again with my sister. Me and my sister were three years apart. You can guess what her name is. 
learned nothing. You, you should meet my other brother. We give up. And my other sister, oops. <laughs> so <laughs> let me take you back to where this started. You see, Zimbabwe is a British colony. Back then, it was a great idea to give your kid an English name so that they can fit in with the other white kids. But the problem is, black people didn't speak English. So what they can only do is take words that white people used to say to them. So, uh, and then go home and name their kids' names like, fuck off, good boy, try harder. <laughs> Imagine you're making love to your woman, you're just there, and then you're like, baby, say my name. She's like, oh, try harder. That, that will ruin it. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for listening to me. I need to go to my other, other peace job. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't park, don't park there. Don't park there.